This may not look like much more than minor league fun, but the researchers behind this project say its goal is scoring major points in the artificial intelligence and robotics field. Yay! These robots are the University of Hertfordshire's contenders for the 2015 RoboCup Challenge, a global competition to recruit some of the most talented engineers and situationally aware competitive robots around. Now we're on a football field, Dr. Polani, but this isn't for humans, this is for robots. It is, and the robots are playing football, not because it's fun, of course, because it's fun too, but because it advances science, because it's a very challenging question to solve, and of course, educationally, it's a very nice way to introduce students to the problems of artificial intelligence. Polani says today's computers understand a lot of things, but interaction in the real world is something they just don't do well at. Universities in the RoboCup Challenge are in the race to create next-gen humanoid robots that evolve via learning and even interaction. How is artificial intelligence integrated into the robot's performance? AI is about finding the ball, finding the goals, uh, filling the gaps in decision-making. That is probably the biggest challenge in the artificial intelligence. You can have very good specialized solutions, but it's very difficult to get the whole picture right. The solution is to let the robots understand the environment just like humans do. Right now we're looking at what exactly the robot is seeing through its eyes. So what you see here is it distinguishes the field from non-field, which is important if you have a ball. How does it know it's a ball and not somebody wearing a red t-shirt? Because in earlier years, actually, the robots would go towards somebody sitting close to the field and having a red t-shirt because it looked like the ball. So it recognizes colors and objects? In the future, the ball will be actually this year already is actually silvery gray and the goals are white. Now it has to actually recognize the objects. But the university has also scored AI points off the pitch. The center recently created a demonstrator home inhabited entirely by robots to learn how best to program artificial intelligence systems to interact with humans in the real world and have even caught international attention with its forays into well-being robotics with robots like this. Let's play together. Tell us who we're sitting by. Who is this man? And this is not a man. This is a robot called Kaspar, okay. childlike humanoid robot. And we use it specifically for, at the moment, mainly for uh, helping children with autism in social interaction and communication skills. The idea is that children with autism typically struggle with understanding people's emotional cues. Kasper is an autonomous robot designed to teach and enhance those interactions. When you look at this robot, the first, the first reaction, the common reaction, oh, it's looking a bit weird. It's kind of, if you, if you look at it, it's kind of, it's, it's with human features, but not exactly human. We're not trying to make it uh, like some of the humanoid that you can see today uh, developed. We keep on purpose, you can see some mechanical parts, you will hear the sound of the motors, etc. Children with autism react to it exactly the opposite. For these children, they like it because it's reliable. They don't, for, when they interact with us, for, for them, all our facial expressions, all of my movement with the hands can be very unsettled, can be, because they don't understand, they, they can't read facial expression. They, there is surprise, I behave s slightly different all the time. Casper <laughs> <laughs> is programmed with games, interactions, and sensors that generate different responses based on the child's actions. Ouch! This hurt. But despite his autonomy, Casper can still be manually overridden, and researchers say the goal is not to create a direct reliance on him. We use it to teach them some communication skills and uh, interaction skills, but the main point is that we use the robot as what we call social mediator. So they're not only playing with a nice toy, which is one thing, which is good enough, but it's not, the, the idea is not to teach them, to make them attached to uh, some machine. We use the, the robot to mediate, to try to encourage interaction with other children, with other humans, which, which is much more important. And despite the football robots being knocked out in the second round, the discussions of man versus machine are something that still exists right across the department. How do those in the artificial intelligence industry look at uh, Elon Musk and his controversial comments? Well, I would say um, everybody has an opinion and is entitled to it. We should really be careful. We should have take responsibility to prevent 
bad things that we can probably predict. But on the other hand, there's not a judgment call on that yet. Should we be scared of artificial intelligence? Every new technical development can be used in two ways. Regulators can try to stop it, but there are only that much you can actually do. You can, of course, prevent markets and uh, you can do certain things and you get a black market. I don't think you can really do that. You have to find ways of living with that in a way that is compatible with everybody's legitimate interests.